present threat of danger now on BBC One with the start of a new series. And the heat is on for the firefighters. Old Swan Fire Station in Liverpool. It's 9 p.m. and Red Watch are beginning their night shift. Peter Huff is firefighter, driver, and tonight cook. Fire call, South Lake Two, Lawrence Road, Waver Tree, Car Fire. Let's go. Old Swan is the busiest station in the Merseyside area. It receives more than 4,000 emergency calls every year. Phil Evans and Gavin Bassey are the two firefighters riding in the back. Phil's on a year's exchange from Adelaide in Australia. Well, at least we didn't get interrupted for false alarm. Holy dooly! The infrared camera fitted to Phil's helmet gets us as close to the action as the firefighters themselves. What's a jolly swag, man? Champ, fire billabong. <laughs> Of our tree. there, boy. Just watch that bonnet. It's hot. It's not as hot as the curry. Oh, the is still going. The Red Watch's sub officer is Alan Jones. We're normally guaranteed at least one car fire every tour of duty. Uh, it's a little early on in the evening, though, to be truthful. Normally, it's nearer midnight than nine o'clock. Oh, hey! Uh, I would imagine probably it's been stolen, dumped and set on fire. Oh, plot. Have you done it all, Mr. Jeff? We're just going to... We're just getting the session number now to, okay. to get some details on it. It's started in the passenger compartment. So, uh, much more malicious than accidental the way it started. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well... I don't want to get much for that. Sort of got a 50-50 chance of getting an uninterrupted meal. 50-50. It's all right, something like that. A couple of minutes in the microwave, it'll be as good as it was. The microwave always improves Peter's cooking. That curry was good. Shame about that. I was enjoying that curry. Two miles down the road on the edge of Liverpool city centre, White Watch's officer in charge, Gary Hollis, is responding to his first 999 call of the evening. We've got a smell of uh, toxic fumes in a, in a house. Central 4 1 in over. Central 4 1, central call, please receive. Receive, Central 4 1 over. The calls we've received is uh, the occupiers reported toxic fumes in the house, so. It could be anything. This is like a strong smell. Like Evo stick glue. It's been like that. But when it gets real cold, it happens. I've complained to the landlord, there's done nothing. It's just, it's just the evening. Gary and his team must assess if the fumes are dangerous. The worst smell seems to be coming from the cellar beneath the flat. You all right, Gary? Okay. The old slim fast's working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get in there before. <laughs> There's no containers, nothing down there, it's not wet. None of your joists have been sprayed. It's all clean down there. There's nothing at all. Yeah, and, uh, I'm just checking the outside from the back, in the backyard, and it comes from the front. We've got a 
a strong smell of a, of a solvent, which is affecting um, this gentleman's wife and the baby. But there's no sign of anything in this property. <laughs> but the uh, property next door is open. Children may have got in and dumped something in there. So we're just going to see if we can investigate in that side. Back up the road, Red Watch can think about getting back to their curry. Best I think I've seen all night. That's probably the best Australian I've ever worked with, you know that? How many you work with? Only the one, mate. I'm British. Get out my way. Lucky it's his last night. I wouldn't let him boss me around otherwise. I don't want to wait for my curry too long. God, I'm going to miss you. This is me dinner. What we do now? What we do now? What we do now? What we do now? The old Swan fire station covers Merseyside's most densely populated area. The crews are responsible for the safety of over 110,000 people. Feel like a dinner lady. Although Peter's curry has made it back onto the table, Red Watch must still be ready to go at a moment's notice. White Watch still haven't found the source of what may be toxic fumes. There's not, there's not a problem with ringing us. Mm. Um, and we'll do what we can for you. Somewhere at the rock wire. It's not on me, it's just at the zoo. They've discovered the house next door is derelict. Gary's second in command, ex paratrooper John Graves, is going to check the back garden for clues. The back of the premises is completely secure, and there's no smell of anything. No. The kids try and get in, but I just chased them. The floor's completely gone in there. Nothing in there. Might as well come out. In, in the meantime, we keep the ventilated. Just keep the ventilated. I don't wish to see him mm. offhand, unless it's uh, an imminent danger. It's not really our Sorry, problem. Not There's nothing we can find, and it's not a great deal to do. Well, well, I, can't, I can't say whether or not it's a danger to you. If it's making your wife drowsy, then I suggest yeah, she's you. Yeah. Yeah. The baby's only nine months old, isn't yeah. it? Is there any. This is Gary's first tour of duty back on the front line after seven years in the fire prevention office. I've been on days for a very long time. With a dicky knee and used it as an excuse for being a porky person. So for the last four weeks I've uh, put down on my alcohol intake, increased my exercise. Time to tell. Only three chins now. <laughs> All 43 of Merseyside's fire engines are in constant touch with central control by radio. At all times, control must know where every engine is and what it's doing. Hi, yeah, Central 4 One's back. Thanks, bye. But up the road at Old Swan, there seems to be a hiccup with the tracking system. They've lost the fire engine, says all stations. Please check if appliance E494 UKF is on your station. If so, contact Central Staffing. We'll have a little look, I have a look at the telly room. Has this happened before? <laughs> Not here, no. I don't really lose them. I know that they, they, they are, you know. But mate, some people are careless, I suppose. How many other out there? Where? Hang on a sec. There's still two. They've lost about eight now and they've never got them back. I think they got sold to Iraq, actually. But we're not sure. Down at Low Hill, John Graves and his crew are on the road again. This is one of the privileges of rank. Poor little cherubs on the pump are out fighting fires, and I don't have to go. And no sugar, it's fattening. John's been called in to help the two crews based in the city centre. 
They've asked for backup as they fight a warehouse fire. We're having trouble gaining access to the front section, so Station Officer Dempsey, the officer in charge, asked me to come down this side and investigate. We've seen the smoke was coming out at this side of the building. We gained access, and now we've sent the breathing apparatus crew there, the lads, you know, the VA sets on. They're checking the rear part of the building. Keith, you're all right. Station officer Eric Dempsey is in charge of deciding strategy. How far in can you get? It's all hidden basements in there. So be careful. Uh, we've got two NBA at the moment. I don't want to let a lot of men in there because it's very dangerous. What I have got to make sure my two fans men have got plenty of water and a good escape route to get out. Because uh, those have been worried. The or over. Eric's team are finding it difficult to get at the fire from the front of the building. Although they're wearing breathing apparatus, BA as it's known, the visibility is almost zero in the smoke-filled rooms. I've set up a BA entry control point this side with my crew in. Uh, it's still burning somewhere in the middle and we're not quite sure exactly what's burning. Uh, so another crew's gone in there to try and sort it out. John has sent a second two-man team in from the back of the building. The breathing apparatus teams wear compressed air cylinders, similar to those worn by deep sea divers. The harder they work, the sooner they'll need new cylinders. What I'm going to do is clear the whole building as soon as I put the fire out, just to make sure that there's nobody in there. It's always a worry. Can you hear me? Yeah, there's nothing to fire yet. Your BA men have got through to my BA men. And Donnelly are doing this side of the building at the moment. Uh, have you got any other BA crews doing a sweep? Over. Yeah, I have. I've got a BA crew doing a sweep on the first floor. The search of the warehouse is being carried out by firefighters Kevin Hughes and Brian Donnelly. In there. Just full of needles and you've got to be careful where you are. The drug addicts rather than Sam's, is it? Yeah, it's druggies, isn't it? If you, haven't, you can see the place is just full of coke cans and lager yeah. and stuff. And human deposits. And uh, human waste. Back at Old Swan, a call has come in reporting fire in a changing room at a nearby park. Fires which could involve human life are given top priority. Both Old Swan's engines will respond. We're out under blue, blue light conditions and South A2 unable to proceed due to road traffic accident. Request the attendance of ambulance and police. South A2 over. The crew of the first engine, the ladder as it's known, have been unable to find any sign of fire at the changing rooms and are returning to the scene of the road accident. 
Is it on your way to a job? Yeah, okay. I think the ladder's come back. Yeah, the ladder's back. Okay, we've got an ambulance on route for these uh, these good people. Okay. Stop at the lights and then just decide on it. I don't know. I don't know you become, become, become bombing down there like I'm through. I slowed down for the junction, right? And I could see him coming through. And I had the lights standing at the junction. Yeah. But I was expecting him to slow down. Yeah. But I went, I, well, yeah. I went. No, I went through for the gap, and I knew yeah. he was behind me, so I thought, well, uh... he, he slowed down at the actual traffic light, as if he was letting me through. And then all of a sudden, as he got near him, he zoomed up and hit us. Yeah. Couldn't get out of his way. He seemed to slow down, and then he took off. Oh yeah. On emergency calls, the fire brigade are allowed to treat red lights as give way signs. But Peter could be prosecuted if the police believe his driving was in any way dangerous. We were driving the demonstrator fire engine J252 KWM at the time of the accident. I was. You've got to use the fire engine and make people do what uh, you want them to do, not what they want to do. So you've got to be a bit more forceful with it and put the machine in a position to make them stop or slow down. At the end of the day, they'd probably just go in the shop, so they're going you know, to a call or whatever, you know, that's far more important to, to get too quicker. I checked to my right, which was clear. I ambled through halfway. There was a car on the left, which slowed down. Back at the derelict warehouse, John and his team have found further signs of life. They go up into the second floor, which is what they're using to live in. And as you can see, there's the drinks down there, which is a mixture of coke, mats, which is what we're quite used to, you know. So it's a mixture of vagrants and drug addicts. Welcome to the penthouse. This is the deluxe area of the sleeping quarters. If you look around, you see there's two sleeping bags up this end. There's obviously another bag there, and there's numerous needles, silver foil. And we've actually known in the past the warehouse around the corner. We actually lifted the mattress up while the people were still on it. Uh, and we're actually on fire, you know, uh, and we do have a very hard job trying to actually get them out. It's a lot warmer than here than it is out on the streets on a wet, horrible night like tonight. As Kevin left the building, he met one of the warehouse residents returning home. I don't know where we, where we were first. Yeah, yeah. He said, I've got a bag of clothes, throw it down for us. So I said, there's no clothes in here, mate. He said, it's by me bed on that floor where you were. So I said, um, there's not near me. So he said, I said, look, we're getting off in 10 minutes, so you can just come back and get what you, what you want. And, and your gear like, doesn't fit us anyway. <laughs> An hour later than scheduled, White Watch can head home for their meal. Well, I'm going to cook me own tea now, because I'm having something different to them tonight. And we're a bit late, aren't we? Yeah. We need to have a moussaka. Moussaka. The reason Brian doesn't eat moussaka is because he's a fussy little person. He doesn't like melted cheese. And if he has beans, he can't have them on toast. He has to have them with toast because it's bean juice, can't touch anything else. So uh, fish and chips for him tonight. See this? That's my dinner. Why are you eating with the others? Because I'll be tempted to eat something that's not very good for me. Very fattening. So I hide out the way and eat this. Mm, nice. Who made this, Dave? Paul. Don't be laughing. Night, mate. I'll take you out and introduce you to an old-fashioned smoke eater. Or should I say smoke dodger, because he's been off on time Owen tonight. Low Hill's third officer has arrived for duty and will now take charge of the second machine. Come on, you old coffin dodger. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Come on, now, it's a long way down. I can do it myself. I can do it myself. You don't usually. It might take time, but I can. That's it. Hang on. <sighs> This is my sub, Bill Walsh. I'm just going to get his Zimmer frame down at the cab now. <laughs> I've actually got a new one. I've got Gary's old one. <laughs> <laughs> Good to go again. Okay. Okay. 
White Watch have been called to another fire. It's at a busy Chinese restaurant less than 100 yards from the warehouse fire they've just put out. A few minutes ago, a routine police patrol saw smoke billowing from the back of the Mayflower restaurant. The diners were unaware of the danger and had to be evacuated. But the source of the smoke is a mystery. Eight firefighters wearing breathing apparatus are going into the restaurant to try to find out where the smoke is coming from. Gary's hoping to find another way in at the back of the building. No, hold on, not here. Right, I'm going to take a machine round the back because of the way the building is. We can't get it from here. So can you take me round? An hour after responding to what turned out to be a hoax call, Peter and the old Swan crew can return to the station for a debrief about the road accident. It to slow down. It slowed down at the light yeah. as, as we got That was still at the ladder through that. Yeah, that's right. And then as, as the ladder went through, we then took off again. We actually had stopped and he ran into you. Clients returning towards Swan now and not available. South to it's 2 a.m. A senior officer has been called in to assess the damage and prepare a report. There's two accidents I've been in with fire appliances. The last one was a, tra a train to driver in the recruit spot. That's what happens when they do prank calls on wet nights. And that was a, uh, it turned out to be a false alarm tonight, wasn't it? Prank call. I don't realise when they make them do that. Even if the police decide not to prosecute Peter, he could still be put on a brigade discipline charge. At the next, just as you go through the lights, a little filter, if you turn like the turn I was going to break through that roof there. Back at the Mayflower, Gary's still searching for the cause of the smoke. No, no, it's bricked up. No, it's totally bricked up. Yeah. There are eight firefighters inside the restaurant. The cause of the explosions is unknown. An instant decision must be taken about what to do next. Get this, get a ladder off. The sound of whistles is the emergency signal to the firefighters inside to get out immediately. The sudden burst of flames out of the first floor windows is known to firefighters as a flashover. The contents of the room have become so hot, they've reached the point of spontaneous combustion.
just went up into the second floor. And they just got up into the second floor and then the lock collapsed. And then the whistles went. So as soon as the whistles go, you come out. The four BA teams are safely evacuated, but this means they can no longer attack the fire and stop it spreading. As soon as it's safe, they'll have to go back inside. In the meantime, all their cylinders must be checked and refilled. Uh, the whole upper floors of here burst into flames now. So we brought all the BA men out for safety and we're hitting it from a defensive tactic now from outside. Just stand back a bit, it might knock you. As the seventh engine is called in, Gary will brief senior officers who now take over all charge. The problem is, when I look out the back, in this corner at the back, it's going to the roof. I don't know whether they can hit it from there. What we could do now is possibly take the pump down the back. Yeah, get down the back No, you can't because you think you land off on this side. And landlocked on the other side. You can't get a machine or a ladder. Like, get him, get him out of there. Yeah. One hour later, Gary's sub officer Billy Walsh and a small team of firefighters have been allowed back into the building. They're trying to attack the fire from a concrete staircase at one end. From this point, they can try and get closer to the fire. <laughs> What we've got, we've got. Right. That's it, you're on our limit there. Okay, John. How long have you two BA men gone? I'll go and get them out. Get them out. Get them out. As the fire continues, the risks to the firefighters attacking the blaze inside are increasing. The alternative is a more defensive approach from outside. Billy? Yeah? He would, the boss wants you all out. What's everyone out? Yeah. I've got the, the team right on top of the fire now. They're actually there now. It's going on the floor above you, right above you. Start bringing them yeah. out. It's solid. Absolutely solid, this. You can work from here. Stay on the staircase. Billy, your BA men are not to move up this staircase. Keep your BA men on this staircase, because it's going above you. Got left, John. If you keep this going here, do you want to have a, just a quick look up yeah. there? Yeah. And if you can get the traps in again, I'll get a team to relieve you. Two hours later, the fire's coming under control, but the smoke is still a major problem. We just started to work our way in, because we can vent the premises to the roof using the hydraulic platform. We've got a team of four men on the first, on the second floor, and a team of two men with a junior officer on the first floor, and they're trying to work their way in. But obviously, because of the length of time the fire's been burning, we're concerned for their safety as well. So we're trying to vent the premises and get some light in there so they can work their way in. But Billy's gone back in without breathing apparatus. Well, Gary, listen, I'm on the second floor. I need to, uh, I need to get a short exit up here. I'm trying to get contact with somebody. <laughs> two men in BA on the second floor. There's four coming in, two to the second floor. Right. Don't so really need them on the first floor unless it's to relieve the team that's in there. We do, but it's to get Billy Woods out. Billy Woods. They're in without BA. Billy's on the second floor. I've just been up into clear. What he wants, he just wants to gain access into that root space and it's sorted that eyes. Billy's convinced that he's on the verge of beating the fire but he's been inside without breathing apparatus much longer than any of the firefighters wearing BA. Billy? Billy Woods? Yeah, Billy Woods. Where are you? With the adrenaline surge and excitement of a fire like this, Billy? it's easy to lose track of time. Yeah. Come over here. Where are you? I'm in by the stairs. This is me over here. Right, come over to, to your left. That's what it's all about. Right, isn't it? Don't pitch right. stories. <laughs> How long have you been in for? Uh, oh, I don't know. Probably about three, three or four BA sets. Going to have a, a little blow now. We'll just send the reliefs in now. Obtain the BA whalers, and we'll start to put the main firefighters from inside now. The fire under control now. Uh, bit, well, just about yeah. Yeah, there's still a bit more to do yeah, but it's under control yeah. 
The fire has done so much damage, the structure of the building is now a concern. It's not safe in here. I'll stay out, please. The fire's finally out. As the last BA teams emerge from the upper floors, Billy has made his exit into the fresh air. I knew you were without BA, so I went in to look for you. So no one, the entity control officer, at the end of the day, it is responsibility. No one out here knew where you were, honestly. We had fellas coming out the second floor on a ladder, and they had to have a jet on to bring them down. Just going out the window. We didn't know where you were. White Watch have been on the fire ground for four hours. That's cool, All right, I'll see you back. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I'll come back to you a bit. That's it. It'll only take 15 minutes to be ready again, but discussions about tactics and strategy will go on for much longer. Four suits, but I don't think we're going to be available for seven or minutes. There's no such thing as holding the fire. You're either fighting the fire or it's going to burn past you. And, uh, there's only, there's only room for sort of one, and that's either the fire or the fire, firefighters, and uh, one has to go. I prefer it to be the fire. <laughs> Twelve hours after the flames were finally put out, the investigation into the cause of the fire is getting underway. Arson will be at the forefront of fire investigator Mike Griffiths's mind. We've got uh, a thriving business with full order books um, and a fire occurring at a time where we're coming to the busiest time of the year. In fact, all the time that we've been here doing an investigation, we've had people coming in for their meals and we've had people asking, can they have their deposits back because they're trying to reboot. The investigation must establish why the fire went undetected as long as it did and how customers were able to continue eating their meals while smoke was pouring out of the back of the building. Now we're starting to get down to the, the lowest point of burning. We've got an excellent exit point for the fire running on this timber uh, wall boarding. So everything that's going on here, anybody who's underneath is unaware. And the fire is traveling upwards. Now that Mike's identified the lowest level of fire damage, he can try and pinpoint where it actually started. What we'll do now is we'll confirm by going to the other side of this wall, because the idea is that I want to see everything both above and at the side, and then eventually get to the point where... Okay. Oh, everyone out. Everyone out. No one was hurt when the ceiling of the Mayflower collapsed. When the investigation resumed, the fire was traced to an electrical fault in a hand dryer in the men's lavatory. The missing fire engine was eventually found. It hadn't been sold to Iraq, but was being serviced at the brigade workshops. Mr. and Mrs. Hughes were not seriously injured when their car collided with the Oswan fire engine. They are, however, suing the fire brigade for the damage. The police decided not to prosecute Peter. He's since been cleared by an internal fire brigade inquiry. Next Wednesday, the firefighters tackle a blaze where there are gas cylinders waiting to explode. That's at the same time, 8.15 here on BBC One.